Well, hello YouTube. This is the old barbecue trucker. Uh, today we're just going to discuss stuff in general. Coming up next on the barbecue trucker. Well, hello, YouTubians. Welcome back to the Barbecue Trucker. Well, it's getting closer and closer. Uh, actually, Christmas is. It's a week from today. And then the following Sunday after Christmas, I'll be headed up to Corsicana to uh, start my CDL school uh, on that following Monday, the 30th. Looking forward to that. Been waiting for a while. But, uh, no, it's not Starbucks this time. It's still Texas Pecan, H-E-B. Uh, Cafe Ole, I believe. It's H-E-B brand. If you don't know what H-E-B is, it stands for Harold or Howard E. Butts. Uh, big grocery store chain in Texas. And they mainly serve South and Central Texas. They're branching out some stores in North Texas, but one of the best grocery stores you can go to. <coughs> Their HEB products are uh, <coughs> better than most, like generic stuff that you can get. They've got a, they've got these, like I say, that's the Texas pecan. They've got all different kinds of flavors. I've also got, uh, I think it's called a Touch of San Antonio and one Touch of Houston or something like that. Uh, they're good coffees. They're just about as expensive as Starbucks, but uh, really, really good. And their powdered hazelnut creamer is better than the Great Values uh, powder. I like to use the liquid, but if you don't have refrigeration, like, you know, at the motel that I go to, I hear they got this little mini fridge, so I'm not going to fill it full of creamers or anything. I'm just going to take the HEB dry creamer, uh, powdered creamer, whatever you want to call it. But uh, anyway, uh I've been seeing some videos that gave me some ideas, you know, about bringing up some subjects. Uh, one subject I, I was going to bring up is just totally embarrassing. Uh, there's a guy, he's a prime driver, and uh, he has a, a YouTube channel, David H. Go check him out. He's got some good videos. He's honest about what he does. But he's been showing some of these <clears throat> truck stops and just, oh, there it is, just how nasty these truck stops are. And he's 100% right. It is purely embarrassing that these people, these truck drivers, not all of them, but the ones that do it, giving the rest of us a bad name. Totally bad name. Leaving a piss jug out on the ground. Not only is that disgusting, nasty, and whatnot, it's actually against the law. You get caught doing that, you, you can go to jail. You can get a severe fine and all. Because, uh, believe it or not, your piss is considered a biohazard. Come on, man. Golly. And truckers that take their dogs out for a walk carry you like a couple of Walmart bags. Put one inside the other. That way you make sure that, you know, look, make sure they ain't got no holes in it or anything. And when your dog takes a crap, put the bag on your hand, reach down there, pick the crap up, turn it inside out, tie it up, throw it in the trash can. Why leave it for somebody else to step in or for somebody else's dog to be sniffing and whatnot? That's. Come on, man. <coughs> this is better for you. Uh, but my gosh. I, I don't know. It was a problem back in the 90s when I drove over the road. Uh, in some of these truck stops that he's at, it makes you wonder why they don't have a crew out there cleaning some of this stuff up. I mean, golly, not this last one he was at, but one before. 
was should have been shut down. It was so damn nasty. It really was. Uh, I can't. You just have to go and look at some of his videos. Go to David H. and look back a couple of videos when he talk, says nasty truck stop. And you'll see it's it's embarrassing. My God, you pig ass truck drivers makes me want to get out and whoop your ass. And I ain't kidding. I mean, you need your ass whooped for just leaving your trash laying around. They got places to throw it. They got trash cans everywhere. Throw your trash in a trash can. Pick up after your dogs. It's not that damn hard. Quit giving the rest of us a bad name. No wonder there's a parking problem. People won't let you park. Won't let them park trucks. Walmarts are stopping uh, the truck parking, and uh, for two reasons: one, the trash; two, because drivers are starting to flood in there now because there's nowhere else to park. Parking is one of the things that I am the most worried about about getting back on the road. And isn't that stupid in a way? Parking. Yeah, it was a problem back in the 90s, and it's a problem to this day, especially in the east and northeast. There's just not enough places to park. Drivers parking in reserve spots and then just hope they don't get woke up. Uh, drivers parking and blocking other drivers in, I guess just hoping they don't get woke up to have to move their truck. It is damn ridiculous. There has got to be something done about the parking problem. There really does. But uh saw a deal on TV the other night on the news that now this is just as bad as smoking, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, they find problems with everything. Oh well. Uh anyway, we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that subject. Uh got my Hamilton Bulldog shirt on. Always a bulldog. Raised a bulldog, Hamilton Bulldog, gonna always be a Hamilton Bulldog. Oh, I uh, went to the Sirloin Stockade last night over in uh, Taylor, Texas. I uh, actually didn't even have a steak because their steaks are just not that great, to be honest with you. But the rest of their stuff's pretty dang good. I mean, I had me a salad, and I don't know how I can start out with four or five little pieces of lettuce. And in my salad, by the time I'm finished with the mushrooms and the tomatoes and a little bit of spinach and some ham and Next thing you know, my, my salad is huge, but I love a good salad. And uh, I walked up there and I watched them. They were just putting out a fresh batch of uh, chicken tenders. So I got me some with some good cream gravy over them. It was delicious. And then finished it off with a big old plate of bread pudding. Oh, man. It was good. But uh, every time I go there, maybe if I was to shave my beard, they may not do it because. As you can see, for some reason, my mustache is not near as gray. And I don't dye or do anything with it as, as my beard. But it does have its advantages because they give me the senior discount every time I go in there. <laughs> we like to go on Tuesday nights over there because uh, my uh, nephew takes our great nephews because it's uh, kids eat free on Tuesday nights. So that's when we, we go there on Tuesday nights. Not every Tuesday, but it seems like the only day we go there. I think if Wednesdays is something like seniors get half off or something like that, they might actually ID me on that one. I don't know. But anyway, that was fun. And, man, last night I was talking to my son on the phone. He lives in North Carolina. Dang it. But uh, And he was telling me that there's something I should bring up in my next video and talk about. And I just, Lord, Philip, I cannot remember what it was. Maybe I should pause this and uh, call you. I might do that here in a minute. But uh, I also wanted to talk about uh, and give a shout out to Trucking with Kiersey. K-E-A-R-S-E-Y, Kiersey, Kiersey. I think it's Kiersey. That's the way she pronounces it. So that's got to be the way it's pronounced. Uh, go check her channel out, Trucking with Kiersey. Or trucking along with Kiersey, maybe that's what it is. But uh, it, it, it even says on there, a positive voice in trucking. And she is. And she has a lot of videos, uh, a lot of help for women truck drivers and for new truck drivers. Uh, go check her videos out. I've gotten some of my information from her. And uh, one thing I will talk about, I'm not going to talk all about it, but uh, 
she did a great video on a uh, bill of ladings and what to, uh, you know, I'm not going to steal her thunder on that, but uh, great points that she brought up. Very good points that you need to learn and know your bill of ladings and you need to pay attention to every detail on your bill of ladings. You know, and one thing that can help you out just a whole bunch besides having one of these, uh, Let's see, there we go. Barbecue trucker ink pens. If you want one, let me know. I'll send you one. Send me an email at thebarbecuetrucker at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. <clears throat> don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like it. Hit the thumbs down if you don't. But if you're going to give me a thumbs down, you know, I'm not going to bash you or anything. Not everybody's going to agree with things I say. But at least leave me a comment. Tell me why you, you didn't like it. Uh, it could help make my videos better in the future, which they are going to be getting better in the future. I'm going to try to document my journey through uh, the process at Swift and uh, all the way up to getting my own truck. I'm going to document as much as I can, make as many videos as I can. Uh, I guess at the motel I'll be at, I make videos right now on my laptop. Uh, now, I did the one with the Baylor game. Uh, a lot of video came from my phone, so I guess I can probably use my phone and figure it out. <clears throat> but uh, we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. You know, but I do want to document my journey for y'all. And then uh, I think it'll get interesting once I get out on the road and you can see some uh, all kinds of videos from all different places in the United States, places I go. And I'll detail them on the map and show you and all. But, uh, yeah, check out uh, Trucking Along with Kersey. And uh, really good informative videos. She's just uh, just a uh, little sweetheart that's been uh, been driving for Prime for like as a company driver for like over four years, and uh, is real happy there. Uh, if for some reason, which I don't foresee is not going to happen, uh, things don't work out with Swift, uh, it'll be on Swift's part, not mine. I'm when I sign up, I'm going to sign up and honor my not really a contract, but maybe it is a contract. They say there's no contract, but sign my agreement. I'm going to honor my agreement and uh, and all that. But if for some reason something didn't work out, then I think I'm going to go ahead and apply with Prime. And uh, they don't seem to be too bad of a company. I I think their 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 training is exceptionally long uh, to be with the team training. I don't I don't agree with team training. Uh, I don't see how you're being trained if one person's asleep in the bunk. To me, it's only just making money for the trainer and making money for the company at the training's expense. But that's the nature of the beast. Most companies do it. So, uh, but theirs is like 50,000 miles now. They might take into account that I've probably got more experience and more miles than my trainer will have. Uh, even though, like I say, I'm not going in with that attitude. I'm going with that attitude to learn what all there is to be learned. Uh, but the fact remains is I can drive a truck. I can back a truck. I can do everything that needs to be done with a truck. Uh, and it'll show. Maybe they won't make me go quite as long. Uh, they might. But, I mean, like with, with Prime, you're going to be with your trainer in what they call the TNT training. That's after you get your CDL license. Uh, probably four or five months. 50,000 miles. Depends on how often they go home, how often, what kind of loads you get, and how much you're, you know, you're able to run. But, uh, so anyway, that's going to be, like I say, uh, one thing I was going to show you, yeah, got away from it for a second. Everybody, every truck driver needs to have one of these. Get up very close. It's just a little notebook. They're cheap. And some companies have books like this that have the places on there like bill of lading number, customer shipper, all that and all that. But get you one of these. And uh, let's see, where's my note? Oh, here we go. Got my stuff that I got to get. Uh, some wrapping paper, I guess. I need to wrap my boxes, I you know, for Christmas. Uh, a ruler, flashlight. Oh. Don't have to do that no more. Ordered Amazon two of these. And I'm going to tell you something. That's bright. 
Sorry about that. But uh, got two of them for like 14 bucks. Uh, got to give me some plastic forks and spoons because I'm going to be getting also, and I didn't put on here, but I, we, I think the forks and spoons will make me remember to get some of those uh, 66 cent uh, chow mein dinners. Are going to microwave? You had water? Oh, by the way, if you do get that, those, and you do forget to put the water in it when you put it in the microwave, it will catch on fire. Just thought I'd let you know that. That's coming, and, and your microwave will smell like burnt noodles for a month. I'm telling you. Trust me. I know. I did it. Uh, gotta get shower shoes. Uh, gotta get some vinegar to run through my coffee maker and make it, uh, pump out coffee a little faster and get me some AAA batteries. You know, but like I say, I always try to make notes on things. Uh, like I did, this one was for a video, so I just used the back of it so I didn't waste paper. Uh, you know, when I was talking about the expect new expectations for drivers and all. But we already covered that in the last video, so I won't bring it back up. But get you one of these notepads. And when you get your load information, come over to your Qualcomm. And now I guess they got apps. Probably come over your phone too if you have the app. Uh, don't rely on that. You get in there and for some reason your phone battery cuts off or something happens. You drop it and it breaks or whatnot. Do the old-fashioned way. Get you a notepad and write every single detail about that load on a piece of paper. The pickup number. The trailer number. The uh, name of the shipper. The name of the consignee or receiver where the load's going. Uh, if it shows on there what the load is, write on there what the load is. Because not everybody's perfect. Matter of fact, not very many people are perfect. And at times, and it doesn't happen very often, but at times you could be, you could get a bill of lading that actually has somebody else's load on it. You may have your load in your trailer, but then you won't have the correct paperwork for it. Uh, they may end up putting the wrong load in your trailer. So if you can inspect it when they're putting it on, be back there and do so. Don't just be sitting in your truck saying, okay, when you get me loaded, let me know. If you're allowed to be back in there, and then if nothing else, before you seal the doors, when you shut the doors, look at the load. Make sure that you've got what you're supposed to have. Especially if it's a long trip. Regardless if it's going across town, you don't want the hassle of having to take it back. Have it unloaded. You know, write everything down and take that with you. You'll look more professional, and that way, uh, not very mistake, as many mistakes will happen. And all, but, uh, well, anyway, uh, we're already gone nearly 18 minutes on talking about. I, I was going to say talking about nothing, but really, uh, I think a lot of the points that I've made are important. If you're one of those nasty-ass truck drivers that just throws your trash down or won't pick up after your dog or whatnot, then shame on you. Kiss my ass. Sorry about that, but uh, change your ways. Damn. we got to stop this somehow or another. Somehow or another, it's got to be stopped. And it hasn't, it seems like it's gotten worse, not better than the, since the 90s, so nothing tells me it's going to slow down anytime soon. Quit leaving your damn trash, piss, jugs, and dog poop for somebody else to pick up, you nasty bastards. Damn it. I'm sorry. i got to get off that because it's making me mad. But anyway, uh, until next time, keep that old rubber side down and shiny side up. Oh, that, that, that brings me up to a point that I've probably made before, but I'm going to make again. Do not let your fleet manager, dispatcher, driver leader, driver manager, whatever you call them, do not let them make you take a load you feel is unsafe. If you don't think the, the conditions are right on the road, whether it's ice or snow or high wind or especially fog, do not drive in fog. That's worse than anything in my opinion. They tell you that load's got to go. 
You tell them to get safety on the line with you for a three-way call. If they won't do it, then you hang up. You call safety and have safety get that dispatcher on the line with you. Don't let them force you to do anything, and most of them won't. I heard at a company one uh, fleet manager getting fired for doing it, and they should be. Don't let your driver leader, driver manager, dispatcher, fleet, whatever, don't let them make you do something you feel is unsafe. It's your responsibility to get that load from point A to point B safely and without injuring the public, yourself, or tearing up the load. Use your better judgment. And basically, if they tell you it's got to go and the road's icy, tell them to kiss your ass. Now, don't tell them in those words. But don't, when you're new, especially if you're new out there. That's especially if you're new out there. I know you want to make a good impression. Don't. It's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. It's not worth losing your job because you'll lose your job. You turn one over, or, you know, get into a bad accident, you're liable to lose your job. Uh, have it on your record. No, 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 no. Just because that dispatcher wanted it to get there sooner? Screw them. Okay. I'm going to make myself mad again. You're not. Okay. Uh, like I say, keep that rubber side down, shiny side up. Thank you, military. Thank you, law enforcement. Pull over for any emergency vehicle or vehicles on the side of the road or not slow down. And until next time, God bless America. God bless y'all. And Merry Christmas from the old barbecue trucker. Here's your boot. Bye. Thank you.